Hey everyone, Jason from Make Care here with another project tutorial. And in this one, we're creating a three piece knot puzzle using the Carvera Desktop CNC and Fusion 360. Now, of course, you can use a wide range of CAD programs to design the model that we need to actually manufacture a puzzle like this. Or if you'd like, you can head over to the knowledge sharing page on our wiki site to obtain the parts that I'll be using in this tutorial. We've created design files for this puzzle project in STL, STEP, and DXF file formats to support a wide range of CAN programs that you might choose to use. But for Fusion, I recommend that you download the STEP file format as I'll be doing in this guide. Once you've obtained your model, we can import or open this model into Fusion 360's design space. And after switching to the manufacturing tab, we want to ensure that we're working in millimeters before creating a new setup. In the setup menu, we can select the Carvera desktop CNC three axis profile as our machine and also choose the stock box point as your work coordinate system origin and make sure that this is set to be the top left corner of the stock to match our probing position on the Carvera. We also wanna select all three pieces of the puzzle as our model. In the stock tab, we could keep a relative stock to our model, but I personally prefer to set up a fixed stock size that matches the actual stock I'll be using for this project. I'm going to be using a piece of stock that's 200 millimeters wide by 120 millimeters deep and 10 millimeters tall. I can then offset my part to be 15 millimeters from the front and left edges and zero millimeters from the bottom so it's flush with the bottom of the stock. And we don't need to make any adjustments for the part position or post-processing settings as these can always be adjusted later on as needed. So then we can just press OK to save and confirm these settings. Now we're going to create our first toolpath, which will be a 2D face operation. This will allow us to remove material from the surface of our stock because the stock that we're using is potentially thicker than our actual final pieces. We can select tool four from the Carvera examples tools, which is our 12 millimeter single flute end mill. And you can choose from the default profiles based on what material you will be machining. I'll be working with a very soft epoxy tooling board as my stock in this tutorial. So the default feeds and speed should be just fine. In the geometry tab, we want to select the outer top edges of our pieces as a chain so we can surface this area rather than the entire piece of stock. For our heights, our retract, feed, and top height will all be based off the stock because that's where we're going to start machining and the default offset should be fine. Our bottom height will be based on the top of our model, not the stock, as we're going to be facing the material down to this surface. In the passes tab, we want to enable multiple depths and you can always use Fusion's auto calculating features to find a recommended step down based on our selected bit as a good recommended starting point. But as the material I'm working with is very soft, I'm going to manually up the step down maximum to one millimeter to cut down on some machining time. I also like to use even step downs and after pressing OK, we can preview the toolpath to ensure all looks as it should. Next, we're gonna create a toolpath to actually cut these pieces out of our stock. Using a 2D contour toolpath, we can select a bit that is long enough to machine all the way through our material. I'm going to select tool one from the examples tool library, which is our 25 millimeter end mill. Again, we can choose a profile based on the material that we are cutting and adjust as needed based on your stock. Under the geometry tab, we can select the bottom edges of our pieces as chains, as well as the inside pocket of this last piece as well. We then want to enable tabs. Tabs hold our part in the stock while we're machining them so they don't accidentally fly out during the machining process. You can choose to set tabs automatically, but I like to personally control the number of tabs and in times like these also manually draw the tabs to ensure that they are set in a position which won't interfere with the part that I'm creating. Placing tabs on the ends of the pieces should work well as they shouldn't interfere with the tight tolerances for this puzzle. And one tab in the inner pocket should work okay as well. I like to also increase the size of the tabs over the defaults just to ensure that they hold. For the heights tab, we're gonna use our stock top again just because this contour cut may start cutting out of the area that was faced previously. For the bottom height, I'm gonna choose the model bottom and also set an offset of an additional negative 0.5 millimeters below the bottom just to ensure that I cut all the way through. For passes, we want to enable multiple depths and I will manually set this to be one millimeter again as my stock is quite soft. And I like to also only finish at the final, which saves some time and also gives a cleaner finish, as well as enabling even step downs again, smoothing to reduce the file size and feed optimization to reduce any negative loads on our bit. After pressing OK, we can view this toolpath and inspect it for any issues. When looking closely at the inner corners, it does not appear as they cut all the way to the model. And this is because the diameter of this bit doesn't quite fit into the corners of this part. So we could choose to actually cut these parts out using a smaller bit that would fit in the corners, but that would obviously take a little bit longer because it's a smaller bit. 
Or we can choose to go back and now only cut the corners with a smaller bit. To do that, we're going to need to create another toolpath. We're going to again create a 2D contour toolpath, but this time select a smaller bit that may fit into the corners a bit better than the one that we used previously, such as a one millimeter corn bit. The default feeds and speeds should be fine for this as we're machining such a small area of material and my material is so soft. In the geometry tab, we are again going to select the bottom profiles of our pieces as chains, just like we did before, but we won't be enabling tabs. Instead, we're going to enable rest machining, which will allow the bit to only cut the areas of our model that were not cut previously. To set this, we need to enter the diameter of the previously used bit, which in this case was 3.175 millimeters for the tool used in our first contour toolpath. For the heights tab, we're going to set the heights off the model, not the stock, as we've already machined this area once before in our previous toolpath. But again, I'm going to set the bottom of the model as the bottom height with a 0.5 millimeter offset. We need to enable multiple depths, and this time I am going to use Fusion's recommended maximum step downs, as this is such a small bit that I'm working with, and I'll enable finish at final using even step downs, smoothing, and feed optimizations as we did previously. After pressing OK, we can clearly see that our last toolpath is only machining the inner corners to get closer to our model. We can then simulate the entire project to ensure all toolpaths look as they should before using the post processing window to save this as a G code file. We want to ensure that this is made using the Carvera's profile and millimeters as your units. If you wanted to, you could separate operations into multiple files as well, though this isn't necessary based on how you're manufacturing your part. Now, before we move into manufacturing this, we have to set up our Carvera with our stock and our bits. Because we're machining all the way through our stock, we want to put a piece of wasteboard to protect the bed. This could be a single piece of material or material that covers the entire bed like the sheets available in the Make Care store that I'm using in this video. To secure the stock, I'm going to use a collection of top clamps along with my corner clamp to press and hold the stock all the way around the outer perimeter. We also need to check to make sure that the bits that we chose in our design file are inserted in the corresponding slots within the automatic tool changer. Now we can open up the G-code file generated by Fusion in the Carvera controller to start this job. In the run and config window, we can adjust our work origin offset as needed, but this should be in the right spot based on how we set up our stock in Fusion. We want to enable scan margin, which should show us the position of our part before machining, auto Z probe, which will calculate the height of our stock automatically using the wireless probe, and we could also use auto leveling if there are any deviations in the stock thickness, but as my stock is quite flat and I'll also be facing the surface, I won't be enabling this feature. Once set, we can press run to start our job. The Carvera will first pick up the wireless Z-Probe to scan the perimeter of our part and then measure the Z-height of our stock before switching to Tool 4 to surface the part. In this step, the Carvera is machining the material down to the thickness of our parts. The Carvera will then switch to Tool 1 to cut out our pieces while also leaving our tabs. It can sometimes be difficult to see what's happening below the surface of our stock, but we can keep an eye on the progress in the Carvera controller. And then finally, the Carvera will switch to our small corn bit to finish the inner corners of our pieces only. Once finished, we can always vacuum any excess dust that there may be before unclamping our stock and then carefully cutting the tabs of the material using a small handsaw and sandpaper as needed for a clean finish. Manufacturing 3D projects with multiple pieces like these is always a fun challenge. And by taking advantage of the Carvera's automatic tool changer and automatic probing and setup features, machining complex parts like these can be done with greater ease. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And of course, please stay tuned for more projects, how-tos, and guides on the Make Care channel.